Welcome back to Crazy Ball TV. Thank you so much for joining me again for another analysis on the World Cup matches that have gone on. Please share, subscribe, and like. Please also leave a comment uh, whether you agree or disagree with whatever I'm talking about. We will start about with, let's begin with the yesterday matches had Cameroon and Serbia, which ended up being 3-3, which this game was crazy. It was crazy. I mean, the match was pretty much exciting, very much exciting for the neutrals. Uh, it was a 3-3 match, six goals trailer, which started with Castelletto scoring in the 29th minute. So you you looking at it, you're like, okay, Cameroon is doing well, you know, nothing that they're playing any crazy football, but they were able to manage as they slowly go. But then, of course, Serbia came back in the 40, 46 minute plus the 48 minute, you know how this World Cup uh, extra time is being added to it. And then when they came back from second half in the 53rd minute, Mitrovic scored a goal. And you think, okay, this is over. Cameroon is basically booked their ticket back home, but guess what? When that Buba car came back on this man pull up a show he gave an assist and then score a very very probably the possibly maybe the second or third goal of the world cup because richard allison's goal is way 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 crazy and then uh second match was of course ghana versus uh south korea which was crazy i mean now i have understand and i'll talk a little briefly more about this match than any of the other rest i just un realized that how young the ghana players are I think they are the second or third youngest team. And now I'm understanding why they're making so many mistakes. Okay, the first match that we play against Portugal, the mistakes was kind of like, what's going on here? They lost their, their mind for like 10, 15 minutes, and then Portugal scored two goals. In this match, the first half, we basically breezed through it. We didn't have, I won't say we have a majority of the, of the ball, but... When we had our chances, we took it. Two goals, you know, from Salisu and uh, Kudus. And then second half started, they made a sub and brought in a uh, song. This, it was almost like identical to the Portugal match. The same, around the same time, the 60, 65th minute, all of a sudden, our guys just start to lose their head. And that's exactly what I had. And they were able to score two goals. And the two goals they scored was just basically our defense and our midfielders falling asleep. And the ball just goes straight in. To, you know, they did well. You know, you have to give it up to South Korea because after the first half, you think the match is over. But they played very well to come back. But guess what? Our guys woke up and scored another goal thanks to Kudus, which again, it was a very work. Uh, it wasn't just a freakish play or it was a corner and it was just a tic-tac-toe and somebody hit it in. No, this one was really working. Again, from our left side, from Jordan. And then Inak, Inaki missed the ball, but I want to talk more about Kudus, man. Mohamed Kudus, this kid is going to be something like... Ghana is looking at a very special kid right now. The way he plays the ball, usually a ball coming like that, somebody would just want to blast it in. But no, he had the patience and calm and it's just, it was just a pass into the net, right through the goalie's hands, you know, and he had pressure coming and he didn't even, he didn't even phase him and put a ball in the back of the net. Now, after that, we were able to hold on for about 10 minutes, but during the last couple of minutes, Ghana was under a siege. I mean, Korea was just launching the balls long, long, long. And it looked like they were trying to equalize. As you know, Ghana needed a win. That was a very, very important win for us because if we had drawn, it would have been extremely hard to move on to the next round. Uh, Brazil played Switzerland. I mean, Brazil had most of the ball. It was, it was a hard work. Very, very, very hard work for Brazil. Was it Casemiro end up scoring? What was it in the 83rd minute? Uh, and it was very, it was a tough match. I mean, Brazil did have majority of the ball, but Switzerland was not with it. They were well organized. They were able to move the ball when they get it. They created one or two chances, but I won't say it's a clear-cut chance because I don't I haven't seen Allison sweat since this World Cup started. The man is just chilling. But this match was entertaining as much as Brazil had most of the ball and it felt like Swiss was playing uh, counter-attack football. There was some excitement in the match and, you know, Brazil now have won the group and they have already qualified. 
Portugal and Uruguay was highly kind of a snooze fest. You didn't even know where the goals were coming from, especially for uh, Uruguay. Suarez started and he didn't do much. All he did was, no, Suarez did not start. Excuse me. Uh, Cavani is the one that started. They couldn't create any chances. A lot of times they had more, most of the, of the ball, but when it comes to the final third, it seems like they were just hoping for the best, you know. I think that they are doing a disservice to Nunes because it makes him look so bad. He's out there. Nobody's giving him any service. And every time he gets a chance, it's like a half chance and he can't do nothing with that. This match, I mean, Fernandez is the one who scored. Ronaldo is still trying to claim for that ball or that goal because he claims that his head touched the ball. Hmm, go figure. But uh, I think they gave the, the goal to Bruno. And then, of course, there was a penalty kick which it's a very, very, very harsh penalty kick, penalty given, but the man touched the ball when he slid down when, and it was, you know, blocking a, an opportunity, you know, somebody to score a goal. So usually when it happens, they will give it a penalty. So that's what happens. And Bruno, at the time, Ronaldo was on the bench and Bruno put the ball in. So that is for yesterday's matches. We move on to today's. No, today, this is the third round of the group stages. So all the matches play simultaneously. So Group A, Equator and Senegal was playing at the same time. Netherlands and Qatar was playing. We knew that Netherlands was going to be Qatar. They beat them 2-0. Uh, this kid, what was his name? Gakpo. Gakpo. It seems like he's making a lot of rounds. He's making a lot of rounds. Big teams are looking at him, and they want him now, like January. That match, yeah, we knew very well controlled by Netherlands. You're not going to talk much. But the Equator and um, Senegal match was more exciting because Equator needed just a tie or a draw. Senegal needed to win. Sa gets a penalty kick. He creates the penalty kick. He puts the ball in the back of the net. Casado put equalized in the 67 minute. And then guess what? The guy that everybody say he's washed, the captain himself, Koulibaly, caught the second goal. So which says that Senegal at that point is make, you know, is going to make it to the, the next round, which is great that they did it because they are the African champions and we needed that to be proven that, hey, we're here. You know, it doesn't matter which which African country it is. We support all of them. And right now, the way the group stages are, Cameroon has the hardest chance to make it to the next round. And then the second one will be Ghana. But as of now, the rest of the four have an opportunity to make it to the next round, which is great. We have, I don't think we have ever had more than one country make it to the next round. So we already got one and there's four more to go and hopefully we could get all of them in. The next, the blockbuster matches was, of course, Iran versus USA and then Wales versus uh, England. Wales versus England, that match was a done deal before it started. I think Wales plays poorly. I mean, Bale, I think he needs to retire from that team. He just, he is killing them. This is not the Bale that helped them qualify. This is not the Bale that was in Europe. This was embarrassing. He is just a passenger in that team. He doesn't help them. He doesn't do anything. Yeah, when they get a penalty, even the penalty he got against USA, it was a rocket. If the goalie had dived sooner, he would have gotten the ball. I, I think he, he doesn't help them and he should not start. I would have brought him later because there's nothing he's doing. Uh, Iran and USA was a very entertaining match. Oh my God. I have to give it up to uh, Iran did not impress me at all. Uh, after beating um after beating Wales, I was I was thinking that they were gonna put up a better fight, but USA was way, 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 way energetic. They came into play. It was do or die, just like the our commentators been saying since the beginning of the World Cup. They played with a lot of energy. And at the end, they were able to see the game out. You know, they did the same thing against England, which they didn't score. And they did the same thing against Wales, which the last minute they, they shot themselves in the foot by, you know, causing that penalty. But you have to give some shout out to some of these guys, man. I mean, Cameron is a, whew, I like that kid. My favorite kid in that team is Musa. He runs all day. He's like the, the, the mini me of, uh, Suamini. This guy has energy. He he's everywhere. He ran that midfield. He bossed that midfield. And you know, he did very well. And then big shout out to, of course, Captain America, Pulisic, who basically sacrificed his family jewels to put to 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 get US to the next round, which was very, very great to see. You know, they did it. 
Uh, this makes the World Cup exciting. You know, USA, I'm liking what I'm seeing with their recruitment. It seems like they read the, the French uh, handbook. That's one way to convince me to support. If they want me to support, fire the entire commentator. You can keep Dempsey. Dempsey is a real one. McKinney, very good player. I mean, I love this, these kids, man. I love kids who are coming up, who have shown no fear. If they develop this team for the next World Cup, which is going to be in the USA, Mexico, and Canada, we, we you know they could cause a lot of problems. They could end up in the semifinals, and when anybody sneaks into the semifinals, anything can happen. So USA have something to work on, and a lot of people have, don't trust the coach. They think he's not good enough, but hey, the man is doing his job right now, and hopefully maybe moving forward, they could get somebody who actually understands them and can move them forward. You know, sometimes these European coaches, when they come in, they, they, they show lack of respect, even though Klinsmann did say a whole lot of truth most of the time. You know, it's what it is. But yeah, I'm very excited. Uh, Ghana will play again on Friday versus uh, Uruguay. It's going to be a crazy match. Uh, you know how I do. I support any and every African country that is playing. And um, what do we have for tomorrow? Because big things are going tomorrow. Because Australia, Denmark tomorrow, Tunisia, France at the same time. Remember, we're playing both uh, the simultaneously. Saudi Arabia versus Mexico and Poland versus Argentina. This team, this whole group is open for everybody. Guys, thank you again. Share, subscribe, like. Chrissy Bold, Archie. Peace.